Now let's go to the next question. Uh, someone writes, Scripture also say not to worry about tomorrow because it's not promised. So which is it? Uh, that's in regard to my suggestions, admonition, that you should be prepared for adversity. You, should, you might want to go back and look at that. We'll have that, uh, our man will put that there where you can find it. Uh, go back and uh, view that, and I talk about how we need to have a little food on hand and a source for water and, and so forth in case things turn really sour in this country, which is a more likely possibility now than it was when I said that a month ago. So this person uh, is, a lot of Christians are saying this. They say, we just live by faith, you know. Uh, we get up and go to work, don't you? Uh, you wash your clothes, uh, you, you, you clean your house, you spray for termites. Uh, but people like to think of themselves as living by faith. Actually, what it is in most cases, it's a feeling of helplessness. And in, in that feeling of helplessness, uh, it seems like it's too big a thing to do anything to prepare to, to save yourself at adverse times or, and to help others. And so people just throw in the towel and say, I'm living by faith. They're not living by faith. They're living by fear they don't want to face. Okay, let's look at what the scriptures say about this. We're going to look at the passage of scripture to which they were referring. This is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 through 34. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one, love the other, he'll hold the one, despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is not just money. It's all the things that make up this life of consumption that we live. Therefore, I say unto you, because of what he just said, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, what uh, yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. So don't think about what you're going to eat tomorrow. So when you go, to the, you don't won't need to go to the grocery store and shop for a week. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. So, just like a bird has no store of food, it just goes out every day and finds something to eat, uh, you should do the same. Just no food, no cupboard, just go out and find something to eat. You might <laughs> have to eat bird seed. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubic unto his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? So you don't need a closet with clothes in them. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. So you don't need to raise sheep and spin wool and weave it into clothes in preparation for wintertime. Uh, when it gets cold, God will provide you with a, 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 a sweater that someone else had sheep and sheared them and spun it and like that. They'll give you, uh, I'm not being facetious. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So you'll not only get something warm, you'll get something beautiful. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Where, see, what people will take something like this and, and give a partial application and not follow through on what it's saying. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what with, with all shall we be clothed? So you get up in the morning time and use your children and nothing to eat in the house. Uh, don't, don't think about it. Uh, don't, don't, don't go out and save up or uh, make money to buy food and put it in your cupboard. Just say to the kids, well, God's going to provide today. And uh, dinner time comes around, nothing, tell them again. You know, we, we don't take thought for what we're going to eat. That's exactly what the passage is saying. So let's be real with it, okay? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. That's a fact. Every single Gentile does seek to clothe himself and put food on the table. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So applying this as it is written, uh, there's no margin for any preparation for food or clothing or house or anything else. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. So he said our, our time should be engaged in seeking to advance God's kingdom and righteousness. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. 
sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In other words, there's going to be enough burdens and evil things today to worry about, so don't worry about your clothes or your food or your house or any of those things. Now, I'm not being facetious. This is exactly what he said. You, you can see that. So the question is, how can this be practical? How can it be true? How can it be, how can we apply that to our life ever at all? Well, this wasn't written to you. <laughs> Let's see who it was written to. This is in the book of Matthew. And if you've got my book, Eight Kingdoms, you understand the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. This is the kingdom of heaven. I can't, won't prove that to you here. Go back and look at the book. Or I have some teaching on it you can find online too. Now, Jesus goes on in the same book of Matthew, and he says to his 12 disciples, that these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, now this is, he's applying what he's taught here before. Go into the way of the Gentiles. Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any, any city of the Samaritans. In other words, do not take the gospel to any Gentiles nor to any Samaritans. Only take it to Jews. Now, is that applicable for today? Well, no, because this was a different time, a different group of people for a particular purpose. Go ye rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and go, so preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of God, came God's the church, the kingdom of heaven is not the church, is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you received, freely give. Now, I don't, any, I don't know any preacher on the face of the earth, nor have I read of any, that fulfill that as the apostles did. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. So don't take any money with you. Nor script for your journey. Don't take a Bible. Don't take a notepad. Don't take a pencil. Neither two coats. Don't take an extra garment to keep you warm when the temperature drops. Neither shoes. I assume that not take two pairs of shoes. Nor yet staves. A stave is what you use to walk with uh, through those mountains and around those rocks. He said, don't even prepare yourself when you leave home by taking a staff. For the workman is worthy of his meat. Now, what's he saying? He sings, you're a workman. I'm talking to workmen here. Workmen's working for the kingdom of God. Workmen whose sole purpose is to advance, excuse me, the kingdom of heaven in this case, who is, is it advanced the kingdom of heaven. He said, so when you go out, don't take anything to sleep with that night or to keep yourself warm or to feed yourself or any writing material or any extra shoes or anything like that. Just go. And where you go, people will take care of you as my servant. When you go, you will stay in the house. And he goes on and he tells them, whatsoever house you enter, by there. And he said, uh, whatever they put in front of you, eat without asking any questions. So you, you can't go and say, I'm a vegetarian when they put uh, uh, lamb chops in front of you. You've got to eat the lamb chops. So he sends them out like that. Now, that was for a particular group of people at a particular time in, in history. Now, look what happens. Jesus reverses, revokes this at the end of his life. That was for the kingdom of heaven, which didn't come. They crucified the king. And so the kingdom of heaven didn't come. It's yet to come. Now, at the end of his life, at the very, uh, be about uh, 12 to 14 hours before he's crucified. And he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked you anything? Now, that's these passages right here. Did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. In other words, God did exactly what he said he would do here in these verses. Take no thought for your life, what you should put on, and raiment, so forth. God clothe you, he'll take care of you. So he said, did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. Then said he unto them, but now. That's like a reversal. He that hath a purse, let him take it. So take your money with you this time. And likewise, his script. He that hath no sword. Now he told them before, if any man smite you on the right cheek, 
turn to them left also. He said, if they compel you to go a mile, go with them twain. That was, that was how the missionaries were sent out to preach the kingdom of heaven, and the Messiah was there, ready to set up that kingdom. But they rejected it. He said, now, if you don't have a sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. In other words, it's more important now to be armed than it is to be clothed. So you need to be packing when you go now, Jesus told the disciples. Now, there's been all kinds of inter attempts to interpret this, saying the sword is your Bible. That's a bit silly. They won't even need to address that. That's as silly as the flat earth. I say unto you that that this is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. So he said that passage in Isaiah has to be fulfilled. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. So they pull out their, be bigger than this, they pull out their weapons. Lord, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it's enough. Now, uh, somebody wrote in one of the, has been another question to answer and said, but Jesus told them to put their weapons away, their swords, a few hours later when he was, no, no, he didn't tell them to put them away. He said, put them back in their sheath, put them back in the holster, keep them. But this is not the time. Jesus didn't intend for them to defend him and keep him from being crucified. He came to die for our sins. Uh, it's enough. Now, <laughs> if you have trouble with what I've said, it's simply because you are, don't know the Bible. You don't need to be a Bible scholar. You just need to read it. If you hadn't read it through 10 times, then you're ignorant of it. If you've not been a student of it and studied and studied and studied and, and analyzed and taken Bible programs. Now, look, look up the word Jesus here. It appears 984 times in the Bible. The word Emmanuel appears twice. And so the answers I give you are not mysteries. that stuff I had to learn in Bible college. It's stuff I get out of the Bible itself. To, with, there's no excuse with a modern Bible program. Even Google, you can look this stuff up. And, and learn and answer your own questions. It doesn't take a, a genius or a, a college graduate. Now, uh, here's what he says in the New Testament. If any man prov provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So, sir, ma'am, if suddenly... The government says if you don't receive that vaccination for your children, you won't be able to get into a grocery store. That vaccination has got a, a marker in it uh, that lights up, a fluorescent marker, so they can just shine a light and see if you've had the vaccination. If you hadn't had it and they say your kids can't go to school, you can't fly on an airplane, you can't buy groceries, you can't go to any public event, you're cut off from society. If they say that, will you be able to feed your children? Will you be able to grow your food? Will you have water when they cut your water off? Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just giving you a, a, a chance, a possibility of something that could occur in the future. It's one of many, many possibilities. Uh, so are you going to provide for your own household? Uh, sir, when someone breaks into your house, to rape your wife and daughters, are, are you going to be armed and ready to defend your family? Not a gun in a closet with uh, the ammunition somewhere else. I mean one lying beside the bed that you can lay your hands on within one second. Uh, I'm talking about one standing in the corner. I'm talking about one under the edge of your mattress. Are you armed? Are you ready? Are you trained to defend your family? If you're not, then what kind of man are you? I'm sorry, I'm getting kind of preachy here on this, but you get the point. <laughs> you know how I feel anyhow. Proverbs 6, 6 through 11. Go to the ant. I try to get him out of my greenhouse. Thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which have no guide, overseer, or ruler, provide, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So the ants lay up, food for all winter. Bees do it too. 
Lots of little creatures do that. They provide during the summer squirrels. I got a yard full of squirrels. They will gather nuts and place them in trees. I go out and lift the hood of my Jeep in the springtime, and it's <laughs> it's full of full of acorns underneath the hood on top of the uh, air breather. Uh, squirrels are busy little creatures providing for themselves. O sluggard, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little while, a little slumber, a little folding the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that tra travaileth, and thy want is an armed man. So those of you who say you're living by faith, if you're living by faith, then you should obey all the scriptures and not something written to the Jews, to the apostles, to the missionaries 2,000 years ago. God warns Joseph of coming famine and directs him to make preparation. Remember that? When God warned Joseph that there's going to be seven years of famine and told him how to prepare for it. Ephesians 28 says, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Now, if, you go, and if you're going to follow Matthew, this passage that we dealt with first, if you're going to follow Matthew, you will not go out and work with your hands. You will not make a living. You will not have a house. You will not have shoes or extra clothes or keep up a script. You'll not prepare any food or store any up or lay out firewood for the winter. You will go out and obey God, taking the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, which is out of date now, to the whole world. And you'll be taken care of by God's people. But if you're not such a missionary, you're an ordinary human being, then you need to lay up in store, not only for yourself, but the Bible says that you will have and be able to give to those that are in need. So I work not just to provide for myself. I lay up not just to provide for myself. I prepare my knowledge, my understanding of survival, not just for myself, but for all my friends, my neighbors, and the people within proximity to me that I would be able to help in time of need. So that's the answer to your question. It's a good answer because it's a biblical answer. 